welcome to my channel. This is Asha Media TV. My name is Asha. If it's your first time here, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is my little channel where I like to watch and react and review a variety of stuff related to science fiction, fantasy, and comic books. So in today's video, you'll get my review, my two cents worth of what I think about the movie. Let me just give you some tidbits just in case you completely missed the title and you accidentally clicked on this video and you thought it was a review of the movie and all that stuff. So, first things first, spoilers ahead. Spoilers, 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 okay? No mistaking the fact that this is a spoilers review. I will be also spoiling likely um, tidbits about the original 1995 movie, possibly the sequel, uh, Annihilation. Yes, I know about the sequel. Uh, I'll let you know more about that in a moment. I will likely touch base on those movies, assuming aspects of this movie may relate to it. So spoilers ahead about all things related to the movie canon of Mortal Kombat, likely. And second, if you want to see my reaction, Details on how to access my full reaction to this movie is in the description box for you. Woo! I got a lot to say. I got a lot to say. So, it's been about 15 minutes since I actually pressed stop on the movie. Uh, regrouped my thoughts a little bit. Um, tried to sort out with some notes I have here on my screen as to what I liked about the movie, what I didn't like about it. So, I want to just quickly say my disclaimer of the fact that I am not uh, knowledgeable about the video games of Mortal Kombat. There's quite a number of them. I've only watched the original movie from 95 and uh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Those are the only two Mortal Kombat related movies to which I'm going to make any reference to because that's all I know. So anything I don't know or if I'm missing context for certain characters and stuff that I'm going to bring up, you're more than welcome to correct me in the comment section, politely, courteously, please. You know, you're more than welcome. I like to learn new things. I'm not going to go out of my way to go play the video games to find out anyway, right? So feel free to do that. But I just want you to know that that is my knowledge set, okay? And with my short-term memory, <laughs> I may forget some stuff related to the original movie that I just saw last night. Like, I prepared myself to watch it for today. And, uh, yeah, so... Just bear with me, okay? All right. What I normally like to do in all my reviews is start with the stuff I did not like, things that confused me, and end off with a bang, a positive bang with the stuff that I loved or things that I liked and all that good stuff, okay? So whatever I say negatively, because it's coming up, it's coming up, um, <laughs> just know I will end it off with a lot of positive stuff from this movie that I did take note of. Okay, here we go. Let's start with the one thing I hated. Not even didn't like, I hated it. I hated the fact that Cole Young, that's his name, right? I, I wrote down the name, yeah, Cole Young. I hated this character's introduction to this reboot because in my opinion, now that I know what I know, now that we see what, who, who or what Cole is all about, he was useless. Let me tell you real quick who I expected Cole to be. And that's why it makes it all the more like, oh my God, it wasn't that at all. So why was he there? I thought that Cole, as the descendant of Hanzo, was going to be like the modern day version of a new type of scorpion. I didn't think he was going to be a completely separate character, like an, an unknown that I'm aware of. So let me know. He, is he a character from the video games? Because of... If that's the case, then I can understand, right? But if that's not the case, if he's just a brand new fucking character they just made to introduce as the descendant of Hanzo, and then you have Hanzo as a separate character himself as Scorpion, which they benched for like the entire movie up until the end, which is fine, you know, I'll get to that. But I'm just saying that Cole as a character bothers me as being the main focus because that's what Liu Kang's for. Isn't this not a reboot? If you're going to reboot an original movie that was quite successful at that time, by the way, why not put the focus on your staple lead, which is Liu Kang? So finding out that Cole in the end was not even, well, I don't know. You'll have to let me know in the comments because I'm going with the presumption. That's where I'm going here. So let you know. 
The presumption from what I'm gathering, Cole is a new character of some kind. I feel bad saying this part, but it's the truth. I didn't care <laughs> about Cole. <laughs> Oh, and especially by the time I found out he had he wasn't a new scorpion and nothing, I was like, oh, okay, he's just another character. When they could have paid attention to Liu Kang, which I thought that's what they might likely do, which now leads me into things I didn't like, and I'm going to break it up in categories. So let's start with characters that I wasn't too fond of in terms of how they were depicted and yeah. So the first character that really disappointed me, like really disappointed me, and I was really looking forward to seeing what Ludi Lin was gonna do with him, and that is Liu Kang. Like, Liu Kang is the man. If you're gonna reboot Mortal Kombat, Liu Kang is the way to start it, <laughs> right? Liu Kang brought me in, in the first movie, so Liu Kang should be bringing me back in this reboot. And unfortunately, um, the performance was not what I wanted it to be. Even looks-wise, as much as I find Ludi Lin very attractive, as a, you know, as a guy, um, he, he didn't have the prowess. That's, uh, I don't know, it's the only word that comes to mind. Like the, the charisma that Robin Shu brought to the role, not just in terms of performance, but also in physicality. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a little too judgy on the stature of the physicality, the, the, like comparing the two. But that's just how I see it and how I felt about it. And the second character, and this is in no order of, you know, worse to le less worse. This is just like coming out of my mind and some from my notes I wrote really quickly. Uh, the next character that was very disappointing for me was Prince Goro. Yo, Prince Goro, despite the fact it was, you know, some some funny looking practical effects back in the day, which was still quite advanced for that time, I enjoyed the conversational aspect of this character. It made it fun whenever he was talking to um, uh, Kano in the original movie and when he was talking to uh, Shansung. And so to have this like pretty much... It's a it's like a Hulk. It's literally Hulk with extra pair of arms. <laughs> he even grunted like Hulk. And I was just kind of like disappointed by that. I thought at least let him talk. He is a prince, right? And I just found the, yeah, I don't know, regressing him to this kind of like, blah, 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 you know, barely saying anything. I think he said one line, if I'm not mistaken, while he was fighting uh, uh, Cole. Yeah, I was very disappointed with that. I was hoping they would do more with, with uh, Goro. And the fact that Goro only has the one fight with Colt, whereas in the original movie, they make no mistake in showing you that Goro is not only huge and scary, but he's a formidable fighter. Like, he literally kills off, like, a bunch of people in the Mortal Kombat tournament in the original movie. And in this one, we just see him fight uh, Cole, who, you know, I find it interesting that Cole defeats him with the Sharpie stuff. And, um... Could barely you know kick Kano's ass at one point so whatever the next character um that disappointed me uh it's so I guess this is more these are more dis disappointments than the, than it is that I didn't like them okay it's more disappointments so is Jax um I was really excited to see that uh McCod Brooks would get this chance to shine as the Jax character because in the original movie we got him for like a blip of a second and the Jax we got in Annihilation, well, he was good looking. <laughs> That's all I remember. I remember he was like, he was hot. But if I had to compare in terms of the value they brought to the movie, unfortunately, I think that Macabre Brooks was shortchanged with the character and what he they, they gave him to do. At first, I had a lot of optimism going that they were going to do some stuff good with Jax because, you know, we get introduced to him at the beginning with Cole and then we see him lose his arms in a really cray cray brutal amazing visually way from sub-zero and then he gets benched really for a little while until we find out you know he didn't die or anything and then he gets these twig like fucking i don't know what the fuck that was <laughs> he's like skeleton terminator arms whatever and then he gets his superpower i'm gonna talk about that but he gets his superpower arms afterwards and then we have like literally two minutes of a decent moment with him against that guy with the hammer. 
Yeah, so we get just that little snippet. That's it. That's it. Like, they had such an opportunity to make Jax a really compelling character. And you have a very good actor. McCod Brooks is a pretty decent actor. It's just like, here it is on a silver platter. Why didn't you take that opportunity? So the last character I'm going to talk about that disappointed me, not necessarily I didn't like, but disappointed me. And I will come back to this character in my likes because it's a 50-50 thing with this character is Sonia. What disappointed me with Sonia, and I don't know how many of you are going to understand where I'm coming from with this. I was trying to figure out how am I going to articulate this? Okay. I was disappointed that they made her so OP and did nothing with that. And what I mean by that is her first 10 seconds, not even 10 seconds, what, five seconds, she pins down Cole, even though we just came from seeing him fight his ass off and lose, but still, she pins him down in five seconds. She chains up Kano, who's supposed to be a good fighter, right? She whooped his ass twice and killed him in the end. So look at all these points are racking up for her being such an amazing fighter. And then on top of that, on top of that, she tags along the fucking story without being the chosen one. I mean, down to the point that Melina's like gagging on her fucking blood. Like, oh, you're not even worthy to die by Melina's hands. People, people, do you, do you get where I'm going here? They made Sonia so obviously super skilled than everyone else. Except Liu Kang, because she didn't go up against Liu Kang or Kung Lao. I would, that would have been interesting to see. But anyway, you made her so, so OP in that way that it just did not make sense to not only give her a mark, the dragon mark, okay? Instead, no, let's show how she proves it by kicking Kano's ass for the second time. That... I'm disappointed. Let me get right down to it. I'm disappointed they didn't just friggin' make her the chosen one. Why not? Why not? If you're gonna make her have that much power before she even really gets powers, okay, then you might as well have just been bold enough to focus on a staple character, because Sonya Blade is a staple character, rather than invent a new one and put this focus on her you know, developing the, well, not those fucking pink rings, but something, something else other than, other than those pink rings and just make it be all about Sonia then. I would have preferred it. It probably would have been upsetting for a lot of you, but I'm just saying, writing a new character that nobody knows and that's not even the new Scorpion in the end, rather than just take a character we do know, we do understand, and just embellish it a bit more rather than having it kind of in between the scenes of her kicking everybody's butt. I don't know if you know what I mean by that. Leave your comments below if you understand my perspective there. If you don't, I, it's okay. It's cool. I apologize if I couldn't articulate better. But nonetheless, that aspect of Sonia disappointed me. But I will come back around to Sonia because there was one thing they got right with her and I will acknowledge it. And the last character that I'll touch on that really disappointed me was Shang Tsung. I was not digging this performance. I thought it was, uh, in fact, it's one of those kind of things where he wasn't over the top enough. The original Shang Tsung in the original movie, that actor had like, uh, he had he had that it factor. You paid attention when he was speaking. When he said his lines in a very menacing almost you know hush hush way he was fucking scary whereas this guy i wasn't scared like he did not frighten me at all in fact the only thing cool about him was what he was wearing <laughs> and his like his old getup. but i just did not feel any menace from him at all sorry but yeah i wasn't digging it Okay, now I'm gonna rag on a little bit on some stuff related to the plot of the film. I just wanna to get to the main three things that I kinda of jotted down that uh, didn't work for me and is the reason I'm gonna give the movie a certain grade at the end of this review. So first thing first is the whole dragon mark thing. I don't understand why they even bothered doing that because it made more sense with Cole and Hanzo and it actually would have added more 
more value to the storyline of this bloodline thing had it just been Hanzo and Cole. But to put it where it's like almost like a token thing that you have to kind of win to be worthy. And if you have one, like your blood has it, like <laughs> Melina can taste that shit. Ah, this it's nonsense. It's nonsense. And I recognized it as maybe their way of kind of taking an element from the sequel that not everybody likes, the Annihilation sequel, where the Elder Gods... You know, they are the ones that had this like special marking. And then when one would pass on, the mark would like, like, anyways, it was related to that sequel. And so I think this was their clever spin on it. I didn't like it. It was stupid. It was just stupid and made more sense. Like I said, with Cole and Hanzo and outside of that situation, it was dumb. Now I'm going to trash talk this whole Arcana thing the inner power thing that they all get when they reach a certain height of emotion, it seems. <sighs> Why? Why do that? It doesn't make any sense. And to make it worse, it's like things that would normally not just organically appear on your body, like metal arms and a laser eye, how is that related to the mystical? Because uh, to me, you know, arcana, arcana, whatever is a form of mysticism, power thing set. I'm associating it to that. So I don't understand how technology fits in to just kind of pop up <laughs> on your arms and, you know, come through your eyes. And by the way, it's a superpower that could be dampened by water or whatever stuff that uh, Sonia through at Kano's eye and all of a sudden like it like started fizzling out. What kind of what kind of arcana is that? They didn't need to do that. They didn't need to do that at all. In fact, they should have just stuck to how it was in the original movie where we already saw Kano with the eye. He's been in the Black Dragons clan thingy for a while now, right? To the point that him and Cabalish guy, Cabal, Cabal, Cabal has, a, they have a relationship or something. They're friends or ex-friends or something. So when, when he already had the eye by that point, I don't know, I couldn't wrap my head around it while I was watching it happen. And the worst part is I even guessed it as a joke during my reaction that uh, Kano was gonna like develop it as a superpower, but not really thinking they would make it like that. Oh my God. If you agree with me that the whole Arcana thing was nonsense, please let me know. I don't want to be alone on that. All right, now my third and last point that I'm going to bring up for like plot devices or plot whatever is the fact that they reversed how Mortal Kombat is introduced to the characters. Why? It made more sense and it was actually a lot more fun to engage with the characters finding out as they went about Mortal Kombat. And that's what it was like in the original movie, right? In the original movie, Raiden's the one who's like, hey, 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 there's a tournament here. We need fighters. Come on down because Earth is going to go kaput if you all don't show up. And we gradually learn about Mortal Kombat and the rules and so forth and so on through those characters' eyes for the first time they're seeing stuff. Like Sonya in the original movie, she only finds herself in Mortal Kombat chasing after Kano. She doesn't even, I don't even, I don't even think when she ended up on the boat, she even knew what the fuck was going on. She was just like, where's Kano? Where's Kano? <laughs> okay. So I just find it weird. They reversed it around where Sonya and Jax, they're part of the regular earthly world of things. Why would they just suddenly find an interest in seemingly supernatural or super, super stuff that's not related to earth? They'd be all like, oh yeah, ooh, there's a tournament. Ooh, ooh. You know what I mean? Like, I just find that weird. Now, of course, it's obvious that they needed to find some way to explain Mortal Kombat. And so they had, you know, Sonya have her wall of fame there, which she did not take any digital copies of, which is stupid. I just find that weird that she's all like, oh, we lost all our stuff. And I'm like, uh, is it on your hard drive? Did you take some fucking pictures with your smartphone? Come on, people. Don't give me that nonsense. Anyways, that's a separate rant. So yeah, this whole thing of uh, Jax and uh, Sonya being the ones to introduce the characters to the whole Mortal Kombat world. I don't know, just, it's, it just doesn't feel like that would have been a logical thing that would have happened. I don't know, am I overthinking on that? Let me know.
All right, so now I'm just gonna wrap up the things I didn't like. Overall, I've already touched on the characters. I've already touched on some of the plot stuff they were using, you know, their, their ex machinas for little things here and there. Let me now touch on just the three things, starting with the first one that uh, overall for the movie was lacking. Uh, it had a very uneven tone. The tone went from serious to almost campy at times, back to serious to television campiness, then down to B-movie cheap budget shit. What I got in the first seven minutes was definitely not what I was delivered in the last seven minutes. That's probably the best way I can put it. And I think the only part where it matched up just a little bit to the beginning tone was whenever Bihan and Hanzo were on screen as Scorpion and Sub-Zero. That's it. So that sucked. Which leads into the second thing that kind of fucked up this whole movie. And that was the set design of things. Because I just watched the original movie last night to prepare myself for this movie. And what I noted in the original movie was, although the practical effects was, you know, very dated when you look at it now, what they did have that this movie didn't have was an organic feel to the layout. So the best example I could put of that is um, uh, Shang Tsung's uh, lair. In the original movie, we go to an island, an exotic island, right? We go to his palace where we get to see so much rich detail of uh, all kinds of stuff in his palace that gave you a feel of being there, that gave you um, a, a scenery. Whereas here, we find ourselves in Outworld, but we're like on this like rock with he, and he's a throne, almost like Game of Thrones, literally. And that's it, that's all we get for a visual. And then Raiden's palace was, it was all right, but I felt at times, it looked a little much like a TV set. Like it was just very Hollywood cheap set at times. So it makes it just so much more disappointing that with all the modern day stuff we have, they couldn't make the visual look as rich and as detailed as the first one. By the end of the movie, I was just like, all right, I guess they didn't want to spend much money on the set stuff and save it for the VFX. Makes sense. And the last thing that I just absolutely think this movie was missing and it was very disappointing and the original movie had a lot of that going and that is humor. Humor. A lightheartedness to it. It was too serious. Raiden was too serious for me. Maybe it's because I've watched the original movie so many times and I'm so used to that kind of like more relatable Raiden. Because this Raiden, I felt, was a little too otherworldly. Do you know what I mean? I felt like there were no moments of levity with hardly any of the characters except for Kano. And that kind of sucked. Because you want to have fun with something based on such a fantastical uh, mythology or lore, right? So yeah, they could have done with a little bit more humor aside from Kano's lame jokes, which I still enjoy nonetheless. but. Yeah, that was a bummer. So those were the things I wasn't digging with this movie. Let's now get to wrapping things up in this review with the things that I loved and that I liked with this movie. And I'll give you my final grade at the end. So the number one thing, the number one aspect of this movie that will get me to press play again, other than the fact that I do have to rewatch this movie with two other people who were waiting to watch it with me. But anyway, aside from that, what will get me to come back and actually look for this movie maybe in the next year to watch some scenes will be Sub-Zero versus Scorpion. Yo, people, come on. We need a movie with those two characters. We need a movie with both actors, those same actors. It can't be different actors, okay? Uh, Hiroyuki Sonata and Joe Taslim. Yo, please, 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 please make a movie together. And I'm gonna tell you an idea of what they should have done if they wanted to create a trilogy of Mortal Kombat. But wait for it, okay? Wait for it. Now, let me break down what I liked about the movie, what was actually cool to see. And I'm going to go with the same categories I had before. So let's start with the characters. 
And this time I am actually going in order of preference. The first standout character that just took my breath away with awe and like, oh my goodness, he's so cool, is Sub-Zero. Bihan slash Sub-Zero. This is the coolest Sub-Zero we've gotten to date in live action. Considering the fact that Scorpion and Sub-Zero weren't that great to start with, in the original movie, I think that Scorpion was still much better to watch than Sub-Zero. So Sub-Zero from the 1995 movie to this Sub-Zero is a massive leap. And I am on board for Joe Taslim as Sub-Zero. I can definitely tell you that that is my number one favorite character of the whole damn fucking movie. And the second character that I enjoyed from beginning to end, I don't care how much they were trying to send certain messages with the portrayal and the lines he was saying, but I don't give a shit. I looked up who this actor was and that's Josh Lawson as Kano. Kano is undoubtedly one of the key reasons this movie was interesting at all. Even just thinking back to the Kano portrayal in the original movie that I watched last night, this is like beyond amazingly better and also so much more engaging. His performance was so good that he is my second favorite character of this whole movie. He was the main reason I was gut busting laughing at times, okay? Some of the lines they gave him was a little too crass, but it was very much welcomed considering the fact that everything else in the movie that was going on was kind of boring. Also, Kano's energy I felt was a good replacement, uh, or not replacement, but it made up for the lack of Johnny Cage because that's probably one of the most distinct differences between this movie and the original movie is that you don't have the Johnny Cage with his, you know, uh, his uh, two-bit uh, one-liners here and there. And instead we have Kano kind of bringing that to the table and I think he delivered 100%. And my third favorite character was Kung Lao. Not only did he have one of the coolest introduction of a character and his uh, super hat, okay, you know, slash Captain America-like uh, shield thingy that defies the laws of physics, but it was cool as fuck to watch, right? But the actor, Max Huang, uh, that was his name, yeah, Max Huang, great job in delivering not just charisma, but also a persona that totally overshadowed Liu Kang. Sorry, Liu Lin, but you know, he might as well have just been Liu Kang. They should have, in my opinion, at this point, after watching everything, they should have just put him as Liu Kang and not even bother with Kung Lao, really. Maybe save Kung Lao for, a, for the sequel, which I'm gonna talk about in a moment. And the fourth character that I thought they did really well with, and in fact, it was very consistent from the original movie to this movie, and that is the portrayal of Sonya Blade. Now, despite the gripes I had about Sonya and her power and her skills and all that being a little too OP and not making any sense and all that stuff, aside from that, when I think back to the original movie, which I watched last night, and I compare the attitude, the, the, the character's uh, demeanor, it's very consistent. Sonia is a skilled fighter. She's a go-getter, really. You know, she's laser focused on her target. Literally, <laughs> laser focused, the laser. Anyway, so she's laser, she's very focused, okay, on what she wants. I mean, in the original movie, she finds herself in Mortal Kombat chasing Kano to the degree that she ends up on the fucking boat with a gun and she's like, where's Kano? She doesn't realize she's on a goddamn boat that's going off to some exotic island. <laughs> Anyway, I like that in this movie, the actress uh, Jessica Jessica McNamee, she was very true to staying consistent with that type of attitude that Sonya Blade has that I'm aware of through the original movie. And I felt also that her physicality was authentic. It was believable. In the 1995 movie, Sonya Blade looked like a supermodel who just learned how to kick for the first time, probably the day before shooting. And in this movie, this actress looks like she's been training for a few months or maybe a few years, who knows? Either way, she looks the part. She looks like a woman that can kick your ass and she looks skilled and her physicality matches the type of skill she's displaying in the movie to some degree. 
And the last character I'll touch on that I was quite surprised that uh, I was pleasantly satisfied with to some degree. Mind you, I don't fully know too much of her character much in, in the video games. I just know of her from uh, some brief video I saw years ago that was detailing Mortal Kombat characters when they were talking about the movie being rebooted. And that character is Melina. What I found interesting was that if you put the two characters side by side, right? Like the actress playing Melina and the character, how she uh, is visually depicted in the video games, the contrast, the differences are so drastic that I, I am a little confused why they didn't add some elements to make her look more like the character in, in the video games. Like why not make part of her outfit purplish? Um, why not give her a nice hairdo? Like I didn't like the ponytail that, with all that flyaway hair. <laughs> I didn't think that suited the actress. I thought it would have been cool if they gave her as close a match of the getup of the character that most video gamers recognize. So that's probably the most disappointing factor. But the actress herself, I felt, delivered a very believable performance. She seemed very menacing. Now, I think the teeth thing, I'm not too familiar with the backstory with that, um, but the whole effect of her having this big white ass scary looking grimace of teeth and all that i think they could have actually gone further with that i mean they just showed it for a brief moment and then it was gone and you just get that one scene that they gave away in a trailer um of her licking the knife and then you're like oh melina you know she's scary but she's scary for like two seconds but nonetheless i felt the actor still with what she had to work with um, not only delivered, I feel, a very menacing performance, but she was really good at fighting. I believed her fighting uh, Sonia and fighting everybody else. I actually was slightly framed by her, and she has a fantastic voice. I don't know if it's altered for the movie, but either way, although they could have added more aesthetically to Melina, I still think the actress did a pretty decent job. Now I'm going to wrap up pretty much the review with two final things, and first one being... What I believe really separates this movie in a good way from the original. And it's only two things I've narrowed down. I'm sure there are others, but two things that stand out to me right now, you know, post an hour since I've watched the movie and I'm recording this review part right now. Um, first thing, definitely Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Getting a backstory with them, getting a whole amazing look, more... Um, stylized fight sequences that were very engaging to watch. Uh, we got our classic, get over here, even though it was a little bit muffled, but nonetheless, <laughs> it was still cool. And they are the number one thing that sets this movie apart from the original. And the second thing, which I think is the most obvious, is the VFX. That's all that really saves this movie when it comes to comparing the two back to back. Everything else, I'm sorry, the original still beats them. So the VFX on Goro, of course, obvious uh, uh, improvement. The VFX on Reptile, okay? We definitely got a reptile that looks like a reptile and not some cartoon squiggly thing. So for me, the two takeaways, in a nutshell, Scorpion and Sub-Zero and better VFX. But everything else, in terms of story, how the plot uh, thickens or how the plot unfolds, I still think that the original movie does a way better job with that. Now, before this review ends, okay, I want to just give you my two cents. If you're willing to just, you know, bear with me for another few minutes and hear me out. My two cents on what I think they actually should have done to make this a really cool trilogy and I'm welcoming of your comments of suggestion or ideas on top of what I'm going to say. All right, so now, if they wanted to do a trilogy, the first movie should have been the introduction to Hanzo and Bihan, as we saw in the first 10 minutes of the movie, okay? The first movie should have just simply been that. Hanzo and Bihan, the history, the backstory, and then they would have ended off that movie with the introduction to modern day times with Liu Kang. Then we lead into the second movie where we have Liu Kang because we were introduced to him as a teaser at the end of the first movie, right? It's modern day, Liu Kang goes on his quest from Raiden 
well, you know, let's go with that, where he works with Raiden to find other worthy, not chosen, but worthy fighters who can fight for saving Earth from being taken over. And then they get ready. They prepare. We meet Sonya. We meet Jax. We meet perhaps other, other people and other characters from the games. But we don't have Mortal Kombat just yet. We just have the prep work. We've got the gang, the Scooby gang, okay? Then we go into the third movie, which would have been cool as the tournament, the Mortal Kombat tournament, in a really cool, fantastical-looking place. And Scorpion is working with Liu Kang and the gang and Raiden to help save Earth because he finds out that his bloodline had survived and that Cole Young is his descendant. But we don't get to see Cole just yet. We don't we don't pop him in out of nowhere in, in the middle of this last movie. We save him for the end where Scorpion battles Sub-Zero and Sub-Zero kills him. He kills him. And Cole Young is then revealed as the descendant that has the dragon mark that only he has, nobody else has that, okay, that ties him to Hanzo and then giving us somewhat of a teaser surprise ending of Cole becoming the new Scorpion because that one had died from Sub-Zero. You get me? Pretty much the theory I had in the beginning the whole time, where Cole now becomes the modern day upgraded version of a Scorpion to then battle Sub-Zero and, you know, avenge his ancestor that got killed. Something along those lines. Either way, Cole should be introduced at the end of a story, not at the beginning because that's what I think a staple character, right? From the original thing, whether it be Sonya, whether it be Jax, whether it be even fucking Kano, okay? I'll take Kano as a chosen one, all right? A staple character hits the ground running and then you warm us up as an audience, you get us interested, you get us wanting more, and then you give us Cole Young, who is related to something epic like Scorpion Hanzo. That's my fantasy trilogy for Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Leave your thoughts in the comments. What do you think? Would you watch it? Would you watch that kind of trilogy? <sighs> there you have it. That is my brief compilation of my reaction to Mortal Kombat 2021. My final grade for this movie is... Okay, I'll, do, I'll give you two grades because this is usually the popular way to go. So out of 10... I gave it a 6 out of 10. Out of, you know, A, B, C, D, E kind of grade, I give it a solid C-. minus. At the end of the day, it was very disappointing that they had what seemed to be a decent budget to make a really good movie. They had a lot of time on their hands. I don't know what could have gone wrong during production. I don't know if it was a schedule thing. I don't know if it was last minute changes that they made. Who knows? All I know is that the potential for this movie to be so great was there. And that's what makes it so sad in a way that they still couldn't beat out the original movie that didn't have the kind of VFX technology we have now. So yeah, that's my conclusion on Mortal Kombat 2021. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. The prompt is there on the screen. I know you see it. I know you see it. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in, and until the next movie that I'll watch, I'm Asha, tuning out. Peace, people. Peace. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos and subscribe. You know you wanna.